the physical boundaries of money, right? The physicality of what it is. We do know that we have different boundaries, physical, emotional, relational, and spiritual boundaries when it comes to money. And I mentioned in the last show that if you have had some very intense, traumatic, or life-altering relationship somehow, that that could be the situations that happen in your life, or it's just there's so much difficulty like bankruptcy and debt, like recurring and chronic debt, or perhaps you've had severe addictions in life. It's just so many stories after stories of negative money situations. That means the trauma that you've had is super, super deep when it comes to money. It doesn't mean that there is no solution to that. It means that you actually have, when you confront that, meaning you finally recognize and you're aware that it's happening, you can do something about it by helping clear your physical energetic boundaries and fortifying them, like creating good habits, right? More positive habits, more for self-care, taking care of who you are, who you are and what you need in this lifetime. So that was the physicality of money. Like you got to have them. You can literally have money if you are open to it, right? So rich people's conversation is usually I can have that instead of I want that. Two different conversations, right? <laughs> so I gave you a homework wherein you can actually go to um, a grocery store or even a department store or the mall and say, I can have that. anything in the bank or your bank is going negative or your overdraft how does it feel doesn't feel good right and normally when the balance is zero or negative you make decisions differently right let's say you want to take a class or you want to go to a networking event but you don't even have um, $12 to pay for entrance fee how does that feel doesn't feel very good now a strong emotional reaction connected to money especially the one that results in poor financial situations, covers up pain, P-A-I-N, linked with money. So pain is our reaction to being treated wrongly. So think about how you were growing up as a little child. If you saw your parents arguing about it, what goes in your head? Okay, What conclusions, what perceptions and, and interpretation do you have regarding money? especially if you witness that every paycheck, perhaps every week, every day. And there's different kinds of emotions. There's anger, there's fear, there's sadness, there's disgust. Unfortunately, all these, disgust means some form of a shame or guilt. Anger, fear, and sadness always somehow is enveloped by some form of shame and guilt. So think about if you need to go to the store, Let's say when you were a kid and your parents said, uh, we need some milk and we need some butter. And you go and you go, oh, let's say it's like $7 and all you got is $2 in your pocket. 
there's a form of shame when you pay because it's like you know you can only afford one thing not the other thing and if you need to pay tax that's a different story right so there's a lot of emotions that we've linked with money uh, just think about yourself again when you want to invest in a program and you're like yeah but I don't have that okay so what is the feeling that you are getting when you want something and you can't get it okay so type it in the chat to let me know so by the way frustration irritation um, those are all forms of anger okay just to let you know all right so this is what you can do because I, I want you to really feel empowered to own this like feelings are not meant to be suppressed feelings are meant to be felt so if somebody let's say you're feeling sad you wanted to cry about something and then your parents said tough it up okay don't don't, don't cry right now right like you're being suppressed not to be yourself like not to feel that feeling so how do you handle feelings do you freeze you're like well I guess I'm just gonna be stoic and I'm not gonna feel anything I can be numb like forget it I'm not gonna feel because my parents said I'm not supposed to feel right do you freeze do you flee some people actually just get out <laughs> just get out and escape something and then some of some of you just fight so the rebels out there you like to fight about everything remember what we do in one thing we do everything in everything so what happens is your behavior pattern it carries over in every relationship that you have right okay so what do we need to do with these feelings so this is how we can really process these emotions okay number one we have to feel the pain right I, I suggested that that you really have to allow the energy to move through you and then by the way it only takes usually seven seconds it, it takes a very short time to just feel the feeling and move it through so just be okay feeling it whatever it is negative or positive energy okay number two we do have to release the negative emotions that don't that don't belong to you so everybody if you stand up I'm gonna share with you a tool called muscle testing and this is a standing sway test so usually I face north because north is about taking action or not taking action but north is very stable it's related to earth energy so if we're all standing north and I zip my field three times like you're zipping a zipper in front of you so I ground myself I feel like a tree I'm connected to the earth 4,000 miles below and I'm connected to God or universe or source and then I allow God to come through and then I put a bubble around me like a golden bubble about 18 inches around me and then I say my name my full name three times so to own the energy right so I'm sealed in my body and I'm present so then you can muscle test and say so to calibrate you can say your name my name is Vivian and normally I move forward because that's the truth and then when I say I'm Lula I go backward because I'm not her right or you can say I'm a female or I'm a male okay so normally your body just gravitates to the truth if there's a confusion there that means there are other energies aside from you that's occupying your body okay so if you ask the divine to release all the energies like emotional energies that don't belong to you and I visualize like two golden buses on each side and I just breathe I breathe blue so go ahead and just allow all the negative negative emotions that are not even yours that's in your center in your body or maybe in your orange and yellow boundaries let's just breathe a few times and allow that energy to move out of our system and you're gonna feel as if you're feeling lighter usually that's what happens you're breathing blue and blue just occupying your whole system and then you're allowing all emotional energies that are not yours to move away from your aura once you're feeling all these energies moving out your third step is to forgive yourself for repressing it because sometimes we hold on to it because we don't know any better 
So we have to forgive ourselves. We didn't even know we were carrying the emotion for others, and that's okay. And number four is to cleanse our emotional energy field, right? So we feel the pain, we release the negative emotions that don't belong to us, we forgive ourselves, and then we cleanse our emotional field. How do we do that? So now let's visualize lots of gold, almost like a golden sunshine, liquid sunshine, and allow it to go around our orange field and our yellow field. Okay, so those two layers. And go ahead and breathe now. Let's just breathe gold and gold, like we're moving gold from the earth up to the head and then in front of us. Let's do that three times. So we can now cleanse our emotional energy field. So that it's just us. It's our divine truth. It's really what we feel as a person, not what our mother feels, not what our, what our daughter or our children feel or our husbands. It's just us. And then the fifth, is to, the fifth step is to take action to create joy. So there's a lot of things I'm sure that you ladies love to feel like what gives you joy what brings you joy and that question you should ask your heart okay so put your hands on your heart like right now instead of watching the show right are you thinking about i really want to i think of drinking my um boba as my reward after i'm done <laughs> my boba tea or going to the beach, like what is it that you really love to do, but then you haven't had time to do it, right? So can you give yourself permission that this week you can actually enjoy something? It could be while you're eating your food. It could be just sitting by your porch and looking outside and enjoying the view. It doesn't have to cost you money to actually feel joy. But I can tell you when you're having fun and you really have this joy inside of you, that's where the money comes in and you attract it rather than you trying to chase after it. So that's really, really important. So let's review again the five steps. What do you need to do, right? Especially if you are a very emotional person. Number one, you feel the pain. Okay, you've got to feel whatever that emotion is. Number two, you have to release the negative emotion that doesn't belong to you and forgive. Number three is forgive yourself for even repressing it. Number four, cleanse your emotional energy field. And number five, take action to create joy. So those are your five steps when you're feeling that emotions are taking over your life. Okay. And when you do that, you really have a clear head. I promise you. So let's practice that all week. Now, we're going to go to how our relationships, right? Our relational boundaries are blue and green, just like the slides we have in front of us. So if you think about the next layer, think about, I want you to get a piece of pen and paper because you're going to write down a few things. This is about power versus love. And this is about your mom and your dad. So you can create two columns and you can write down your belief systems that you have learned, perhaps you've acquired and you've accumulated about money regarding, is it about power or is it about love? I can tell you between the two, you will usually choose love, okay? Not power and not money. So people have this weird connotation about money and we've attached meaning to it that money is power or money is love. Just think about when you were a um, in grade school. When you go to school, it's nice if you were well provided for. You go out there, you compare, right? You compare how you dress, you compare what foods you eat. Unfortunately, we live in a world of polarity. So money has become an expression for us on who we are, you know, are we valued or not valued? Almost like we have a brain that says, well, if you're poor, you're only like this, but if you're rich, you're like this, right? So that's reality of the society. So we've been conditioned and programmed to think a certain way regarding rich and poor. So if you have equated the money you have 
based on that, that hits on your self-esteem, right? You're being not enough, you're deserving issues. So all of those came from the observation we've had in everywhere, like in, in our society, in our neighborhood, um, and how we live and how people perceive people with money and people without money. So write down your beliefs about power and about love. And what I'm going to do is perhaps there are some people that can relate to this. So I wanted to entertain some questions from our viewers because I think this is a juicy topic. And remember this, if you have a lot of negative feelings towards rich people or those with money, usually it's going to be difficult for you to get there because you don't want to be like one of them, right? So let's set the story straight and let's release what it is that you are having. It could be a negative thought, emotion, um, or sensation in your system that's stopping you from really having a good life. So let's bring up the questions about power versus love. Anyone who has a question or a comment? All right. So Sarah had, had seen money fights all her life. And I thought money used fights. Yep. So in her brain, caused fights, right? In other words, Sarah's uh, thought process is that Every time there's money, most likely there's going to be a fight. <laughs> or even if you don't have anything, then you still fight. It became more about rebelling and about fighting over anything. It could be little things, right? So Sarah, um, Sarah went with us in Sedona. And that was an observation she's had. But remember this, she's done it all her life. Like from the time she was a baby all the way to a certain time. And finally, she's like, I mean, fighting, by the way, causes so much uh, confusion and it uses a lot of energy. So, Sarah, how can you shift the fighting? Okay. I mean, is there really a truth to that? If there's money, there has to be a fight. Like, how would you like to shift your life differently? Where in when you have money, you don't have to fight because... If there's no fighting, what happens is there's more for everyone and you can actually uh, contribute to different organizations and bring more blessings to other people. Psychically, okay, so I'm going to explain on my psychic side, there are lots of, um, we call these beings, negative entities or energies that hover around money, right? So you can use money for light or enlightenment or you can use money for making things muddy or murky so ask yourself how can i shift my perception of money so that i can actually use it for my benefit right to bless people with it rather than fight with it or making it uh, an, an issue for a fight okay awesome is there anybody else that has a question on power versus love no, I think they're still marinating on this because sometimes we become very unconscious, right? Like we just, we, di we didn't know that there's any other way aside from what we've learned and what we grew up in. So let's take a deep breath there for a sec. So the next exercise I'd like to share with you is create two columns of how your mother actually perceived money. Okay, so just write down all your belief systems regarding that. And then how your father, how your father used money, how your father perceived money. I want you to write down all of your observations and your perceptions and the information you receive from your parents. Um, and you'll notice this, right? So your main hub is, of course, your family. And then when you went outside the world, it almost just confirmed what your family is telling you whatever you've observed and experienced there. So your money story usually comes from your parents, from zero to eight. I've mentioned this before. From zero to eight years old, every single conversation you've heard from your parents becomes your belief system until you realize what you're doing 
and then you go, hmm, there must be a different way or perhaps I can change this money story so that I don't end up like my parents, okay? So that's usually my observation on people. Um, even I had that same thing, right? So money story, what's your mother's money story? My mother's money story, um, like she values a lot of relationships, right? And she would fight for that relationship, uh, but then she doesn't know how to receive, okay? So money is a receiving issue. She's a giver. She gives everything she has. So remember on our first show, when you let go of everything and you gave away everything, you literally forgo your own safety because money is like the first aura, right? The red aura. And uh, usually that's traditionally, that's how people look at it. But money, of course, has different colors and different stories in all of your chakras and auras. So the, the privacy, right, of having a shell, like your own house, your own apartment where you live in, if there are holes all over the place, we call those money leaks, uh, do you feel safe in your own house? If your door it doesn't have a lock, maybe your windows, you can't close it, like there's just openings everywhere, we call those money leaks. And when we have these emotional stories and relationship stories and how we connected that with money, you're going to have money leaks all over the place. And unfortunately, it doesn't feel good that you work so hard then there's nothing, seems like you can't keep anything. Money comes in and it's like water that flows out, right? Because of the emotions again. Money, emotions, water, all related, okay? All right, so let's ask the stories. Okay, we got a question here from a viewer. How can I shift from seeing my blue-collar parents be very frugal while raising a family of 10 and we emigrated to the U.S. and we were quite rich before immigrating to the U.S.? Okay. Thank you. All right. She, she wants to shift that from the blue collar. Okay. Yeah. It is, um, again, you grew up. There's a lot of struggle there. And um, I would bless your parents, right? I connect them to God and earth. And I would really bless them because they taught you the value of hard work. They taught you so many values that without that, you won't be where you are right now. So there's a goodness there. And you can acknowledge that part of them. Yet at the same time, if let's say you're thinking about, hmm, I'm now going to shift from being a blue collar worker and I'm going to establish my own business. Totally different mindset, right? Because in a business, uh, your business is not you, even if it's just a sole proprietorship. Let's say you're the only one right now that's working in the business. Your business is a separate entity, like a baby that is being born. So, Think about when you had kids, when you had kids, the babies need some diapers, some milk, right? Food, clothing, shelter, they have the basic needs. So the baby needs to be provided for, and at the same time, you have to be provided for. So I think of when you create a business, uh, if you think about, let's say, charging $50 an hour for a service, you do need to charge at least $100 to pay for half for the expenses of the business and then half of it goes to you personally. So you're like working for your business rather that, than you are the business. So the best thing energetically is to bless our parents because and acknowledge what they've contributed, but at the same time thank them and say, I am choosing a different lifestyle in this lifetime and I'm going to do it differently and in the process, you learn a lot about yourself and you're also going to bless you, right? And them at the same time. Because for us people that have good hearts, what happens is when we make more money, we just share it more to others. We find more projects to share it with. So thank you for that question. That's very good, Lauren. Yeah. My dad's money story is providing and being able to take care of everything. Yes. Okay. So where's the question there? So the question is, if your dad's story is providing, are you taking that role of providing as well? So for some women, we become the providers and the men become the person in charge of the home. Okay? Think about that. Like, is there a difference? No. Men and women are pretty much, if you can listen to me here, we are equal. No one is better than the other one. 
but we play different roles. So if you decided to take the role of your father being the provider, but you're unhappy with it, like there's resistance within yourself, sometimes that becomes an issue. But if you happily take the role and say, I am so glad I'm the one that's doing the providing for my family, then there is really no story there, right? Because it's just a little bit of like a role reversal. And so it's the negative feelings that causes the resistance, right? There's underlying pain inside. And when you can get to the root cause of that pain, then you understand, oh, I didn't know I was behaving like that because of a thought in my head <laughs> that's causing all these drama and stories around money. So thank you for sharing that. I hope that answered your question. How do I make money without feeling like I have to give it all away? Yes. So that's a very good question, Venus. When you make money, there is this, um, I want to give you guys this exercise. So I think this will be more, um, you can experience it rather than just tell you. So everyone, I want you to just, again, stand up tall and be in a receiving um, mode. So think about your arms like this, or you can lift your arms like this, whatever feels good to you, okay? So as you breathe, I want you to breathe blue and blue. So embody yourself, just breathing blue from the earth up and then bringing it down. When you ask the divine to shower you with money, to shower you with energy, so we can visualize the divine bringing gold, cash, whatever it is, gold, just don't hit your head, right? Just let it flow. <laughs> I want you to create containers. So this is where planning Venus comes ahead. It, it would be very helpful for you to create multiple containers in front of you. So it could be assigning one container, let's say, for your retirement. Perhaps the other one is for business expenses, right? Perhaps the other one is for your own self-care, travel, reward system. Maybe another one for your parents. So everybody create their containers so that when you bring in this money and attract this boatloads of money coming in, you can actually categorize and move the energy where they need to go. So if you don't have a plan where they're going to go, so I teach my clients in the gold VIP and even in the 90 day success to have a reward system. Okay. So if you work with some project and then you get this money coming in, in the next 90 days or so, I want you to create different containers for you, for your family, for your vacation, maybe for your dream home, retirement. Okay. So now let's bring in the gold and then let's see where, and this is about control or no control. Sometimes we are too much in And just observe you can observe the gauge like the depth or how how the containers get filled up so now bring in money from the right side your male side and then bring in the gold there and let it go where it needs to go if it doesn't go anywhere that means most likely the universe is either you're bringing it in and you need a lot of that assurance to just feel like you're a wealthy person because it's it's actually that financial satiation like how satisfied are you with what you have it it doesn't depend on how much you have or you don't have it's really dependent on your emotions and your relationship when it comes to money okay so bring in the gold from the left and just allow it to go where it needs to go Very good. Now bring in money from the front. So bring in the gold from the front. So this is from future, from your future. The left side is from female energy, like allowing, right? And then from the past. 
So the past is usually people that may owe you money. You may have karma with them. They have, may have stolen from you, and they're coming in to just bring in what you need at this time. And so I want you to observe the containers that you created for yourself. Where did it go, right? So when you really just allow the universe to help you, so again, money is a receiving issue, okay? What are you not willing to receive to actually make money? Are you willing to learn something new? Are you willing to accept rejection from others? Are you willing to be able to handle some negative energies and learn how to deal with it, right? Are you willing to accept love? So the positive and the negative will come. That's part of the lesson. Like it doesn't mean that in this lifetime that you're a good person, that you were good in another lifetime. Not necessarily. So if you look at karma, it's almost like a balancing act of the universe. And if you've done something in the past, doesn't quite look good or somebody felt um, injustice from that, you may find that person back in your life. Sometimes they're closest to you. They're your relatives. They're your husband, wife. They're your mother or father, or brothers or sister. That's how deep it is, right? And when we can learn from our relationships, when we can allow ourselves to just be, knowing that our mother and father have their own soul purpose, their own path, we have our own. And if you can recognize that, um, and you can recognize and be aware that, you don't need to take on all of your mother and father's belief, belief system, right? Uh, you decide and you make a choice what's working for you. And if it's not working for you, perhaps you can shift that to something else that would work better in your life. Okay, so I hope that helps you on the relationship side. So I want to share with you what can you do. Ooh, we're getting some feedback. Okay, so. Uh, what do you need to do? Okay, so these are practical tools that you can use using colors when you're feeling certain emotions, okay, to help you really balance the energy of money in your life. And by the way, please write this down. What if time and money can be your friend? Like, how would you really handle them? Okay, instead of, oh, I got to I gotta do this to get ahead. Nope, you can delete that thought and say, what if, like, be more inviting to it, right? Money and time is my friend. Okay, so what do we do when we're angry? When you're angry, please wear blue. So you want to soften the energy, right? So when you're angry, you wear blue. Now, when you're sad, you can excite yourself with soft reds, oranges, and yellow, right? Like a sunshine. Think about sadness is in the lungs, so you, you can wear yellow, so you can be happy right like the sun okay when you're scared you go for brown russets or navy blue okay when you're scared and by the way when you're scared usually i breathe and then i do it anyway whatever i'm scared of especially if it feels like so big like your dreams because the next step is going to be take you closer to to your dream and go okay when you're happy you can wear bright pastels so that you don't really become hyper, right? You're already happy. You're excited. So uh, pastels just kind of like hold things in, like pink, you know, pastel blue, pastel, everything pastel. And if you're susceptible to taking on others' issues, it's good to consider black. So black is for privacy. So that if you really need some privacy in your life, Let's say you want to go out somewhere, but then you don't want to talk to most people and you just want to like conserve your energy. Black is a good color for you. So I hope that that helps you find different practical ways in actually um, balancing this money act, right? So remember, you can have it, right? And you can remain in the question of how does it get better than this? Because it always gets better if you believe it will, right? It will bring you so much joy to know that the universe has your back. The universe is abundant and prosperous on its own. Like if you don't cut weeds, it's just going to keep on growing until your whole house is covered with weeds. All right. So still to come is live audience Q&A. So let's take any other questions or comments from the group. Um, 
Mm. When I wrote my book, I had friends say, when you are rich and famous, you won't have time for us. I'm thinking I may have that thought limiting me. Yes. If your values and priority is are your friends, yes, their comment means so much to you. But then the question is, uh, are these really your friends? Because usually friends would support you and elevate you and would be happy for you when you get to another phase in life. So a lot of friends, sometimes they don't want us to grow because they're afraid that we're going to leave them because they're not willing to change. And that's completely okay. So know that, like with nature, there's a cycle of birth and death, right? There's a start, a, a middle, and an end. Sometimes friendships are good for a certain time. There are some long-term friendships like forever friendships. But at the same time, there are qualities in them that you can, I mean, if, if the negative comment is so much more, like 60% more than the positive, again, it's your decision to stay with this friend. You can most likely limit your interaction with them. You can kind of feel it in your body. Like how did your body feel when you hear that? Because that's more limiting, right? Like, would God say, by the way, don't shine your light so much because you're too bright, I can't see. Too bright, too fast, too too much is a version of you're not enough. So are your friends feeling like they're not enough compared to you? Because comparison is the thief of joy. You'll never be happy when you can compare yourself with others. You can compare yourself with yesterday if you like, to keep on improving yourself. But if you're in a growth trajectory, it is normal that our friends sometimes feel like we're leaving them behind. So that feeling, leaving them behind, is a very natural feeling. I would move through it and say, I wonder what kind of friends do I like? So I'm going to share this with you that when, you know how you think that I bought this book that says you uh, have a new husband by Friday. You know how all of us that have been married for a while, it seems like we always want to change partners or change our partner, right? A control issue. Anyway, the interesting thing there is when you start, I, I, I wrote something that says, I would like a partner with these characteristics, right? So then, of course, you look at your partner and go, well, that's not the one I have. It's very interesting because I kept my focus on the ideal partner that I'd like to have. And over time, right, again, with patience, a lot of energy work, not with him, but with me, okay? Clearing my own misperception of that relationship, that person actually became this person eventually. Does that make sense? Because I was focused on the outcome, what I wanted to have in my life. No attachment, whether the person will change or not change. But again, with love, it just... Uh, unveils itself it like opened up like a flower and then the person shifted to a different one so to speak which is great right that's the transformation of a relationship now does that happen all the time if you're not patient enough to wait for the results again you're the one that keeps if you keep on changing partners you're the one common denominator in the relationship okay usually the first two years of a relationship is happy, honeymoon stage, nothing's wrong. You couldn't even see what's wrong with each other until the reality hits, right? So then we we now have to deal with the, the karma part. So I, I suggest to a lot of people in a relationship to stop arguing. Like you're digging the karma a little deeper when you're always fighting. And you're actually pushing away money. I just want to tell you that because there's no cooperation. There's no good flow. So every time you open your mouth and get triggered, a lot of times it's not because of what they did. It looks like that. It's more because of what happened in another lifetime or a past life together that's bringing up the issue. So if both of you can chill and find a different way to address it differently, you'll find that there would be more ease, grace, and flow in the relationship instead of always fighting all the time. And again, focus on what you see good about the person rather than focusing and magnifying their negativity because that's what you get more of. Okay. Thank you. Any, anybody else have a question or a comment? Money and time being my friend brings feelings of calmness and assurance that I can have anything I want 
feeling very still and aligned on the inside. Ah, oh, very good, Venus. Thank you for that. Yeah, feel that, by the way. So the words you hear that resonate with you, I would like really breathe that and bring it into my heart, into my midline, right? When that becomes your reality, because I'm helping you guys see yourself from the inside out. You can't make yourself happier because you have a new car, a new house, a new husband. Temporarily, yes. But you notice the feeling escapes you, right? Versus you become a money magnet and you actually just, you're just happy and complete and whole as you are. Your job is to nurture yourself like a seed in the garden. Make yourself beautiful, make yourself feel good because then you radiate that energy, then everybody just wants to be around you. So that's the secret of being a money magnet, just to let you know, okay? You, you release a lot of judgments, <laughs> criticisms, blaming, shaming, complaining, projecting. Um, every time you say something bad towards someone, look at yourself and go, do I have that? You think you don't. Sometimes you think you don't, but then you really look and go, oh, yeah, I probably have that in myself and I needed to shift something. Now, does it mean you have to put up or tolerate certain people? Not necessarily, right? You decide, again, your choice. Who are the people you would like to include in your life? That is your choice. This is your life. You are the director, the producer, the actress. Um, you're everything. So you choose how you would like to make this life, this lifetime, the way you wanted it. Okay. Lauren, how can I shift the upbringing of blue? Oh, we, we answered this before, the blue-collar parents, right? You see your parents' um, values and how they've helped you become you and then thank them for that and then make a decision that you're going to be something else aside from a blue-collar worker and then that would be great. Awesome. Okay, anybody else have a question? I think we got every question answered. So I hope that helps you in many ways regarding your money relationship. Again, consider time and money to be your friend. And if you have a business, money is part of, what if it is part of your dream team? How are you going to handle it, right? And so I wanted to thank you all for being here today. And I hope this helps answer a lot of your questions inside. There's a lot of processing to do. And that's okay. Stay with nature. Feel the abundance of nature and just feel big yourself. Like be okay with who you have become, right? Because sometimes you keep on comparing yourself to, well, what if my parents would, again, that's your monkey mind. What if my husband says, okay, so I had all that until I quieted my mind and I said, you know, what do I want today? And what really resonates with my soul? Like how can I feed my soul? And if that's the answer that you have now, like that's your question and then you answer it somehow or there's an answer that comes to you, please do that. So for me, it's going to the beach for the next seven days, six days now because I started yesterday. And then I don't know what's going to happen, but I know when I trust the universe, somehow it magically appears. It's called um, trust and faith, right? So that's really the definition of when you have divine downloads. You got to go for it, right? You got to follow it. Even if you don't know what's going to happen, just be open to the blessing and the miracles that's about to come in your life. Because I see it all the time with my clients making, you know, seven figures in less than, what, <laughs> two months. <laughs> and then another one suddenly has been given, um, like, a, a property will be bought for like eight figures. Like, wow. When you are in your line and you're connected to God and earth and you're in your body, that's the key there. You've got to experience all of these and be okay with the emotions that you're feeling. Just be willing to receive the miracles coming into your life. So I want to thank you all for being with me today. And next Wednesday, we have a very special guest on sacred geometry. And so for those of you who are thinking about their homes, maybe their buildings, and you just want to know what would be a good way for me to 
uh, infuse right sacred geometry into my life. Stay, stay tuned for next Wednesday's episode at 12 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Bye for now, and thank you all for coming here today and enjoy the replay for those that weren't able to watch it live. Bye.